Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 16 of my linear algebra tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover the end of linear transformations by showing you how projections can be made using linear transformations, as well as how to combine linear transformations. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so let's say we have two vectors, and one is at 6, 4. So right there. And then we have another that is at 2, 5. So let's draw those in. And I'm going to label this vector B. And I am going to label this vector A. And basically, the way a projection works is a projection from vector B to vector A is the location closest to the original point. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line right here. And this is actually going to be a 90 degree right angle as we drop the perpendicular line from B to A. And to actually find this one individual point, what we're going to do is we're going to look for a constant that I'm going to label as C that minimizes the distance between B and A. And that constant is going to be vector b times vector a over a and a which is going to work itself out to being 2 and 5 and 6 and 4 over 6 and 4 times 6 and 4 and if we work this out we're going to get 32 over 52 which is going to break down further to 8 over 13. Then what we're going to do is multiply this scalar by 6 and 4. And that is going to give us an answer of 48 over 13 and 32 over 13. And this is going to be approximately equal to 3.69 and 2.46. And let's see if this is indeed true. If we look over here, 369, yeah, it looks like this could be roughly at 369 and 2.46. Yes, that looks like it's almost exactly in the middle there. All right, so that is one way that we can find the projection of this one individual point. But what I'm going to show you next is with a linear transformation, we are going to be able to find every projection onto A. And how we're going to do that is we are going to take A and we're going to normalize it so that it points in the same direction but has a length of 1. We've done this in the past. And we do this by finding the magnitude of A. So the magnitude of A is going to be 6 squared plus 4 squared, which is going to work out to be the square root of 52, which can be simplified down to 2 and the square root of 13. So then what we're going to do is normalize this and how we do it. And this is going to be labeled as a hat. This is just simply going to be 6 over 2 square root of 13 and 4 over 2 square root of 13. And from this, we are then going to create a matrix. And the format of this matrix is going to be a hat 1 squared. And then we're going to multiply a 1 by a 2. And then we will do the same over here. A 1, a 2. And then in the bottom, we will get a hat 2 squared. And if we perform these calculations, we're going to end up with a matrix that's going to be 9 over 13, 6 over 13, 6 over 13, and 4 over 13. And we can use this awesome transformation matrix to project any point on B onto A. And let's just use our original point just to verify this is going to work. So let's take our matrix we have here times 2, 5. And if we do this, we're going to end up 
with exactly the same results. So pretty cool stuff. All right, and that is how we can project from one vector to another using a linear transformation. Now what I want to do is talk about how we can combine transformations. So let's say that we would want to do something like we would like to rotate a bunch of vectors 45 degrees and then scale them by two. Well, this is called a composition and a composition is just the combining of multiple transformations and how you would basically describe a composition. Let's say you have one transformation T1 and you have another transformation T2 and you have a vector A and you want to perform both of these transformations. Well, you can either write it in one of two ways. You could say T1, put a little O inside of there, T2 and your vector you're performing this operation on or you could say T1, T2 with your vector inside of there. All right, and now, like we said, we want to rotate a bunch of vectors. Let's go and draw those vectors in. So let's say I have vectors at three. Let's do like a diamond shape like we did before. And let's just connect them just so we can see that diamond shape that we have here. All right, so there you go. There is our diamond. We're gonna rotate it by 45 degrees counterclockwise, remember? And if you don't remember how to do that, check out my video that I did when I talked about linear transformation rotations. And then we want to increase the scale by two. All right, so what we're gonna do in this situation, T1 is going to be to rotate 45 degrees this is the matrix we're going to use. It is square root of 2 divided by 2, square root of 2 divided by 2, negative square root of 2 divided by 2, and 2 square root divided by 2. Okay, so there is our matrix for rotation. And T2 to go and scale it up by two. Remember on the X and Y axis, we're gonna use 2002 like this. And how you go and combine them is you just multiply them. So we're gonna take 2002 and multiply it by this guy that we have right here. And this is extremely simple math. This is going to work itself out to be square root of 2, square root of 2, negative square root of 2, square root of 2, right like that. And then what we can do is take this guy right here and multiply it times those vectors. Let's go and get rid of this because we got everything we need here. Paste this inside of here and then we're going to have this and then we're gonna have the vector that we are multiplying times, and then we are going to get our resultant vector. And let's go and do this for every single one of these. And there you go, we got all those on there. All right, so we're gonna go times 0, 3, we're going to do 3, 0, we're going to do 0, negative 3. And I'm just plugging these values and these different vector points over here on the right side in, like that. And if we go and perform these calculations, we're going to end up with negative 3 square root of 2, 3 square root of 2, and 3 square root of 2, 3 square root of 2. Basically, the only thing that's changing here is the negative signs. Negative 3 square root of 2, and negative 3 square root of 2, and negative 3 square root of 2 and 3 square root of 2 is approximately equal to 4.24 and if we go and plot that over on the right side of the screen we're going to see that we're going to get a point approximately right here and another point approximately right here another point approximately right there and the other point approximately right there and we can see that we were able to both rotate 
as well as scale all of these vector points and get an, an uh, answer that makes a lot of sense. All right, so there you go. That's the end of linear transformations, but that's not the end of linear algebra. Many more videos coming, and like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.